A lot of the conversation that uh, Craig Mason and I had, we would talk through a sequence like that and talk through all the beats. What do we get out of those beats? Why are they important? Well, let's just get that wholesale into the show. I think Neil and I were both excited by the idea that we could actually add a little bit more context to Joel and Sarah's relationship. This is your chance. You keep her alive. So with the show, we could say, okay, what's important in the sequence was like, well, we want to show the bonds of the family. Are there more ways of showing that that we couldn't in the game? Because we could take more time, like, let's show them waking up, let's show them having breakfast, Sarah going to school, Sarah going to get her dad's watch fixed. We shared a lot of the concept art from the original game and, and the remake with them, and they used a lot of it very faithfully to make the fans that were playing the game feel like they were being true to the material. If you don't think there's hope for the world, why bother going on? So the beginning of the game was one of the last things we got finalized when we were making Last of Us. For a long time, the plan was to play Joel, not, not to play as Sarah. And it was like, you as Joel would hear a commotion over at your neighbor's house, you would walk over there, you would see they're infected, then you'd head back and grab your daughter and then run. And it felt like I've seen this. And the aha moment when we're having a brainstorm in like a, one of the design pods was, uh, what if you played as Sarah? Hey. Scoot. It was very important to build the relationship of Joel and Sarah. Here. What's this? Your birthday? To show their characters and what kind of people they are and how they live and, and relate to each other. You kept complaining about your broken watch. You like it? And then when things change, when things go bad. Dad? Daddy? And the fact that you're seeing it through like a very innocent child made everything creepier, scarier. You in here? Quiet, quiet sounds mixed with very, like the TV was loud. There seems to be some commotion. We went to the window, the explosion shook the room. Oh God. Everything was there to create this kind of uneasy tension. These, these kind of elements of like something is off, something is off until Joel comes in and then has to shoot his own neighbor. Jimmy, just stay back! <laughs> Jimmy, I am warning you! <laughs> Where the hell you been? You have any idea what's going on out there? I got some notion. Uh, once you get into the car, you have tension being raised by police cars coming through with all the lights spinning around. The view is very claustrophobic. Things are just very close to you. Army's put up roadblocks on the highway. You look at a sequence like that, as an animator, you're like, oh, this is something that you get really excited for, and then you get really terrified that you're doing because it's, it's a big moment. With doing that, we have to kind of really pull your attention to where we want it to be. That's Lewis's farm. We do that with sound, we do that with animation, we do that with, with lighting, with fire. All of that is something that an animator put love and care into to make sure it happens exactly the way you're seeing it. But maybe one of the most important things to show in that drive was the family that's asking for help. Let's see what they need. At that moment, Joel shows you who he is. Who do you think you're doing? Keep driving. I got a kid, Joel. So do we. But we have room. Hey. Keep hey, driving, stop. Tommy. Stop! And Joel is somebody to survive. He has to control his environment to the best of his ability and make decisions based on what keeps them alive. He's going to do everything he, he needs to to take care of his daughter. <laughs> I think about the entire soundscape. Everything after the car crash switches from Sarah's perspective to Joel's perspective. Because then it's a father trying to save his kid. Come here, come on, give me your hand. The infected gets closer and closer and the shadows get longer and longer. His intense light just shines towards you. It settles in into the worst thing possible when you think that you're almost at the finish line and then Sarah dies. 
One of the things uh, that I did to be to keep myself emotionally, and it still gets me emotionally uh, available for that, is I actually, when we tempt the sound of Sarah, it was my child. We knew what was going to happen, and so we 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 kind of played into that as it made it worse and worse and worse until it was almost a save, and then it's not. It's okay, baby. We're safe. Got a couple of civilians in the outer perimeter. Please advise. Eddie, what about Uncle Tommy? The choices we made were authentic, right? We didn't want to stray away. We wanted to make it grounded. Sarah. Move your hands, baby. I know, baby, I know. It's very powerful to have such uh, a specific beginning to mark and shape the identity of the character thereafter for the rest of the game and, 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 and for the rest of the show. The simplicity of Sarah's death was actually really hard to get to, and we, we worked at it so hard. Uh, and Hannah Hayes, who played um, Sarah, did such a fantastic job. She was so believable as like a child dying. I remember that we had a few crew members that walked off set. They were like, they felt it was too much to watch that happen multiple times. We have great actors, Pedro and Nico, just just do this heartbreaking job. I love the game version and I love this version. They they live equally in my heart. <laughs> Sarah. Baby. Don't do this to me, baby. Don't do this to me. Always accessible, always readable, always raw. And, and I think uh, to try and be honest to that as much as possible was, was a huge push.